Hey gang, are you new to this podcast? Have you subscribed on Spotify, Stitcher, or Apple Podcasts and realized that you can only access the 20 most recent shows on these platforms? Do you, my friend, want to binge on How Did I Get Here? Well, check out our archives that are available on the Podbean app. If you follow us on the Podbean app, we have every single show ever released on that on that platform. You'll also get all of your favorite shows like Fresh Air, WTF with Mark Marin, ID10T, the Michelle Obama podcast. All podcasts available there, and you can also access over a thousand How Did I Get Here episodes. So, download the Podbean app from your app store and start listening today. Let's get down. Folks, are you tired of people telling you your band is too darn loud when you're just trying to practice in your house or garage? Well, if you live in Austin, I have the solution for you. That's Space Rehearsal and Recording. Space is a state-of-the-art affordable venue for rehearsal and recording located just a few miles south of downtown Austin. They have 31 spacious rooms, great PAs, fantastic courteous staff. They have everything you need to get your artistic business together at Space. Find them at 512-448-9518 or go to spaceatx.com and start playing as loud as you want in space, rehearsal, and recording. Let's get down. Hello, I'm Johnny. I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys have all had a good week, whatever it is you've done this week. I've done a lot of stuff this week, and I do have to say that one of my favorite things I've done this week is a couple of in-person podcasts. They're coming back. It's so nice getting people back in the apartment to talk to me in that way and like not be on Zoom. You know, Even if someone's a stranger, one of the people that came over and did the podcast I'd never met before. But by the time he sat down, he knew who I was because he walked in the place, he saw all the instruments, he knows I make the music, and so I'm, I'm with the person. Like, you know, oh, so you know my life, that's what they think, right? Because I do, because I'm them. And that's the great thing about this podcast, and that's what I've enjoyed so much about it, but have actually been bummed out about for the last years, having to do so many Zoom conversations. Um, not that I haven't gotten to meet a lot of amazing people from all over the country and all over the world over the last year. I've opened up and not really had as many Austin artists as I've normally had. And uh, that's been exciting and neato. And I hope that you guys have, have gotten to meet some new new artists. But yeah, uh, doing the in-person podcast has been great. It's been fantastic, man. Get vaccinated. It feels so good. You can go back and resume your life, man. Resume your life. Pick up where you left off in February or the end, or beginning of March of 2020. Just pick right up. Go say hi to people. You know, be in a room with other people that have been vaccinated. Take your mask off. Everybody hang out. Lick each other's faces. Whatever you want. Don't be weird, but, you know, be weird. <laughs> you know what I mean. Gang, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to Marfa tomorrow. It's my girlfriend's birthday today. And have dinner with her family, and then we're gonna uh, take off to Marfa in the morning. We're gonna go out there and stay there for a couple of days. Should be super fun. I'm excited. I'm gonna see my friend Scrappy Judd Newcomb, who I haven't seen in a while. I'm gonna stay in a teepee. Should be cool. I'll post some photos on, of it on the How Did I Get Here Facebook page. Hey, don't forget to like the How Did I Get Here Facebook page. Also, you can follow me on social media. On Instagram, I'm at Johnny Gowdy. And on uh, Twitter, I'm at Johnny Gowdy. But follow us on, uh, on, on, on uh, Facebook. Get to see pictures of all of our guests. I want to make a quick announcement. I've got a show coming up with my band. I've been releasing some singles. Another one will be coming out next week, March 28th. Or May 28th, sorry. One came out April 25th. Sun, Earth, Moon. You can find it on Spotify or Bandcamp or whatever it is that you stream and download your music. Go there and check it out. Great tunes. But I'm playing Friday, June 25th at 310 ACL Live here in Austin. I'm really excited about the show. Got a great band. Great band. Got John Chipman on drums, who I've been playing with for forever from the Resentments. And, of course, my friend Gabriel Rhodes, who I've been writing and recording a bunch of tunes with. 
that you'll be hearing some of these singles. The next single that comes out is our, is the first one of, of our collaborations. Gabriel Rhodes, amazing artist, he'll be playing guitar. I've got uh, Alex Chad from Yate playing keyboards. I'm really excited about that. I love Alex Chad. You'll be hearing him on the show too. The Yate has been dropping some singles and they're absolutely fantastic. And on bass, I'll be playing with Harmony Kelly, who I love. Amazing bass player. She's the bass player for Kenny Chesney. So they can't get back to work because they play stadiums and we haven't quite gotten to that level of show yet. But uh, she's here for a couple of months for the summer. She's still hanging out, so she's going to come out and play bass. It's going to be fantastic. And opening the show will be my dear friend Noel Hampton's band, The Bell Sounds. So, uh, yeah, June 25th, that's Friday, 310 ACL Live here in Austin, Texas. Go to 310austin.com to get your tickets. That's the number three, the word 10, austin.com. Get your tickets, man. Come on out to the show. It's going to be great. Us and the bell sounds. Come back, man. Take your mask off. Have a drink. Watch people play music in the same room as you. It's magical. It's magical. (laughs) Gang, I have a great show for you today. Jess Robbins from Chicago synth pop band Course is my guest. You can find them at CourseSounds.com. And today, their LP drops. It's called A Late Hour, and it comes out today. As I said, go to CourseSounds.com for all of your course needs. Uh, Check it out, man. Even though they're a Chicago-based band, they came down here and recorded a lot of their record in the Hill Country here at a studio whose name I'm forgetting, but is in the Texas Hill Country, and it's it's set up between uh, Airstream trailers. Really interesting interesting, uh, recording process. They came down during covid and set up shop out in the Hill Country and recorded these synth pop tunes and then went back to Chicago. But Jess Robbins is an amazing, amazing songwriter. Amazing. She also wrote uh, nine short stories, narrative fiction stories, to accompany and elaborate each track on the album. As I said, A Late Hour is out today. I'll be playing the song Give It All Away. Fantastic song by the band Course, Chicago-based synth pop band. Right? Get into it, baby. All right, so without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with the amazingly talented Jess Robbins from Chicago-based synth-pop band, Course. Let's get down. You're in Chicago. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, so you did this, you did this record, A Late Hour, which by the way, is it's gorgeous. You are a phenomenal, phenomenal songwriter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You, so you did a lot of this record here. I'm, I'm in Austin. Yeah. So you did it out yeah. here in Dripping Springs. Yep. And I'd never been, I'd only been to Texas one time, but it was only because my flight got rerouted and, it ran out of fuel and we ended up in Corpus Christi. But anyway, yeah, I, that was such a great, I loved being there. It was awesome. Yeah. Especially change from Chicago. I, you know, mostly recorded here. So just going out there and just having a different experience. um, That's cool. There's also something about going to a place like that's where no one has to like, Oh shit, I got to go home. The guy's coming. You know what I mean? exactly or like right i just didn't have anything to do right i didn't have to like because when you're at home right you might have to do your job or something but i right it was just like relaxing i mean it was, you know it was work but it wasn't like i felt like i was in a totally different and it was so hot it was august so it was like crazy. <laughs> so you got the you got the full experience yeah so got it real uh, yeah Tell me about the studio. It's 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 like all airstreams are the cutting rooms. Yeah, no, it's like a house. It's like a little house, like a one. Well, no, maybe there's like a second, a slight second floor, but um, it reminds me of like a ranch house. And then there is um, airstreams around, like different places people can sleep or stay. And I think they have like touring musicians who come through or whatever. Um, but yeah, there was like beds for everyone basically. So it was so nice. And 
um, real remote area. Yeah. But it wasn't where it was where like Friday Night Lights was filmed, right? Or I don't know. I'm sure some of it was filmed there. Yeah. Or Um, someone said that yeah, lives there. Lead actor, I forget his name. Oh yeah. yeah, The uh coach uh Yeah, Coach Taylor. Coach Taylor, baby. You know, I watched that whole series. I, it's funny. I, I played the rap party for the whole series. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, and But I hadn't watched it. <laughs> I hadn't watched it. Was- I had a bunch of friends that were in it and had like different parts in it. And a friend of mine kind of starred in it. But we played that rap party and, and someone there was like, oh, you never watched it? Oh, it's really good. And so I watched it all on my phone. For some reason, I didn't watch it on my TV I would just watch it on my phone, but I watched I the whole I series. Yeah, I I loved it. It's yeah. intense, but I wanted a I wanted a marriage like, um, like those two had Coach Taylor and Connie Britton. Yeah, yeah, Mrs. Coach Taylor. <laughs> In real life. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that something you look for in your life? That kind of. Yeah. I mean, I was, yes, I was in a bad relationship actually at the time I was watching that. So I think part of me was like, oh, things could be so much better. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) TV, it could happen in real life. (laughs) Right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was like really in a bad situation and that was a nice escape for me. That that happens too much. The bad situations. Yeah. Yeah. It's an unfortunate thing, and I'm I'm hearing for some reason it seems like it's been very prevalent the last couple of months. I've been hearing about it from different, even my own family members. Uh, I got a sister that was in a in a bad relationship with a guy that was doing a lot of cocaine and drinking, yeah. but then he was nice when he wasn't, and so then she was caught in this weird thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. What? A, yeah. Exactly. But I think the pandemic probably compounded that for a lot of people being home with them more than, uh, you know, more often than they would have been in other situations. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so you guys started this band like right before the pandemic at the end of 2019. Yeah. And how uh, you'd played one show or more than one show or. Yeah, we just played one show in February. And I think like we were all like, there was one case in Sia. I don't remember what was happening then. It was definitely like it was coming or we didn't really know it was going to happen, but the show went on and then. Um, I had yeah. one of those. So, yeah. March 13th. Oh, yeah. March 13th. Oh, yeah, that- I, I had a thing where I called the guy like four times. Like, Are you sure this is really going to happen today? He's like, yeah, man, come on down. I went there and three people came and it was weird. That is weird. March 13th is the day that I believe Chicago got locked down. Or maybe it was the 14th, but we got locked down. Yeah. We could not leave the house that day. We were supposed to go to a birthday party, a friend of mine. And they were like, nope, no one can go. That was a freaky time. Well, so uh, did you started this band. You had these songs written. Yeah. Yeah, basically, I just reconfigured the band. I was, like, performing under my name. Right. And I didn't want to do that anymore. I was done being, like, a solo artist. I didn't want to make all the decisions all the time. And I just didn't like that it was... It's such a... You know, the bands, they're so collaborative. It's such a process with everyone. I didn't like having that fully on me, like, the credit to me. I just didn't think it was fair. Um so I just wanted a band name and a band, you know, just to make it more a band. And they're so like, these guys are just so great and helpful. And I think before I was more like, you know, just doing everything. And this is better in that, like, we can all collaborate together. So when you say that you were doing everything, you were, you were doing all the, all the music, all the instruments and everything. No, not in that way, but I was, slowly writing the songs i didn't get a ton of input um and i was like yeah deciding the parts i wasn't playing the parts but yeah so now it's just a much more it's a lonely place isn't it yeah i just released a single today and i'm a solo artist and it's a it's a it's a lonely thing 
Yeah. Call my girlfriend every couple hours and be like, hey, it seems like people are liking it. I don't know. <laughs> I, it is, it's a vulnerable position, too. I don't know. I had done it for a while, and I was just like, I don't know, ready to. And I wanted to change the sound like to be more synth pop band, and I just think that the band feel. Um you know, and so it just seemed to fit for this new record and like going forward what I'd want to work on, you know. But these songs you had written when you started the band. Yes. Some? Yeah, for the most part, for the most part. But I did write three songs with my friend Kevin. Um, so we collaborated on that. But the band did contribute. Like we changed the bridge to a song. So they're like in, you know what I mean? Right, right. In, yeah. But the majority of the songwriting is you're still your responsibility. You're telling the story, so to speak. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, you're you're an amazing songwriter. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, these songs are 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 gorgeous. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about a couple of things. One of them was uh, I read about uh, that song Henry, and I went and listened to it. It's a beautiful, dreamy, uh, sort of like a. a meditation on the end oh know? yeah yeah that song i that went back and forth a lot of times um but yeah that was like a very difficult song for me because i uh, it's about someone who i knew who died um, not super well but it was like a kid like a 17 year old kid um and then when I recorded it, this other person I know, their child died of cancer, like the day I recorded it. And I'd been following the story on like their GoFundMe page or whatever. Um, it was just like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hard thing. And he died by suicide by train? Either that or drug over. They don't really know. Drug overdose or suicide. It, it's unclear what happened, but a train hit him. Yeah. What a difficult thing. Yeah. To process. It's interesting that you took the uh the viewpoint of the of the mother cuz that's really yeah. the toughest loss from what I understand. Well, yeah, and I just felt like he was a kid still. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I mean 17 but still living at home and like his last year in high school or about to start his last year in high school and like yeah, I think, I mean, it was just bad. I was like, bah. <laughs> How do you, so. I mean, like, how do you, that's, a, I'm, I just, as a songwriter too, just like, I mean, that's a difficult headspace to get into. How, how did you manage to do it and do it so gracefully and empathetically? Think... There's a lot of empathy in that song. Um, well... I don't, yeah, I don't, I did think like, how can I relate to this fully? I mean, I do have um, twins. I have kids. Uh, oh, little, shit. So, yeah. You so, look like you're like 17 or something. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice. Um, I, well, they're little, they're little, I, they're little guys. Um, they're five now, but <laughs> I didn't at the time. And anyway, they're in a few of the songs, but um, so I was relating to it as a mom, like, I mean, not yeah. having lost a child. Well, that makes like, a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but I didn't, right. I, it was hard for me to like put myself in that position of, but I felt like that was the position to be in for that song um, and to write it from a mom's perspective. Cause that to me was like what she you know, what he, like, who was most important to him in his life or who was the most important, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Now, you were, you were, you were playing then before you had kids and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. And writing mm -hmm. and everything. How, yeah. how did, how did that experience alter your creativity? Um, and I know that this is I want to I want to clarify this because I do get some emails sometimes from people that that say I'm a sexist because I don't ask uh, fathers how the, it affected. And I do I do ask them, but you carried children inside of you. Yeah. And no and matter very, how much the father's involved, unless you're a rich person, 
<laughs> the mom ends exactly. up with the bulk of the work. That's just the thing. You got to breastfeed the babies. Like there's a lot more involved. There just is physiologically. Oh yeah, and I had I had identical twins, so there's a lot of risk, and it was like a freak accident. They said um, so. You know, it is. Um, it was a lot on me and very isolating. And actually the song, the next I, single coming out, Nick of Time, uh, I don't know if you heard that, that song is about the relationship I was in and that I got out of that. And I wrote a short story about like my post-birth experience, but in a fictional way. But anyway, um, yeah, I think, um, but ultimately I think it helped me be more creative in that I like had been through so much and in a deep way that, um, I was able to like feel a little fear, not fearless, but I wasn't as concerned anymore about other things, you know, like I had like faced death basically head on. Um, <laughs> um, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's a life changing experience. Yeah. So they're, I- they're identical. Uh huh. I used to date an identical twin and she and her sister are crazy. Really? Yeah, they did. They, just people, do they have their own language and stuff? Do they have the... They're, no? they're, it's something you'll never understand. Yeah. It's the weird connection. It's not like normal siblings. It's, they have something that's like, I don't know, but they're really sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and they, you know, they're just fun. But they're, at, you know, at a stage where I feel like I can do other things, but it was hard for a couple of years there. I was like in the trenches. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a sister so. that did the solo parenting thing. And I mean, she's just got one, but it, it's, it's, you know, we talk a lot. She has yeah. a lot of wine at night. <laughs> yeah. <it's really> <laughs> yeah it's really bad it's hard yeah but there's a- no what are you gonna say i was gonna say there's a lot of uh, musicians in chicago who have kids like it seems like um like a pretty good amount um have like one or i don't know you know or having a kid soon so it feels like there's people doing it you know what i mean right right so it's possible Real quick, let me ask you this. Uh, have you been part of that scene up there for a while? The Chicago yeah. scene? Yeah, for quite a while, yeah. Um, what's what's it like? What's I, I played there a few times, but I never I never met any Chicago bands too much. Oh really? Where'd you play? The double door, that place that had the backstage <laughs> downstairs where there was a uh-huh. rat like this big one time when I was there. Yeah. Um but that's gone, right? Yeah, but they're building it. Well, they were before the pandemic. It was going to be now moved to Uptown, I believe, um, which is where like the Green Mill is and the Riviera and the Aragon. Like it's a pretty big like um, music district area in Chicago. Oh. Um, and I think they were like before the pandemic, Double Door was going to come back to that area. But I don't know. I haven't heard what's happening with that. You know, now that. But I, the Chicago scene's pretty cool. I mean, it's like very late. It's like Midwest. You know, it's Chicago. It's yeah. like everyone's really nice and easygoing. Everything you know moves a little slower. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's like very tight. You know, I, people are supportive of Chicago. You know, it's just like you feel good about playing with other Chicago people. Sure. And yeah, so it's been nice. But I really loved getting out, and I definitely want to do that again. Go somewhere else to record next time. That was fun. What made you choose Texas? Well, the extreme um, heat really, of August. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I really want to get it in that heat right away. No, so I think. Um, well, Dan, the pro- uh, the producer, and um, who worked with me on recording and mixing, he, I really like liked what he was doing and my friend kevin introduced us and he was like do you want to come out for a week in texas and i was like whoa okay um and it was cool i was really glad i did it so yeah and we got you know i did go to, we weren't in downtown do you live in downtown austin i live or? in downtown austin pretty much yeah okay so i went down there a little bit um try to see the bats is that like really touristy to do. You know, you want to know something, man. I've lived here since 1991. 
and I've never once gone to see the bats. I've had friends that have come to town and been like, I want to see the bats and I'll go drop them off and go run some errands and come back and pick them up after the bats. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I, um, that's like the Sears Tower here, which is called the sure, Willis sure. Tower. I've never been to the top of it. I, yeah. You know, like maybe here, I've never been on the Ferris wheel. Right. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I loved it. It was cool. It was really cool. Cause I'd never been to South by Southwest or anything like that. So it was cool to be there. Yeah. Um, a, a couple more things you got. So you, you mentioned earlier and I read this as well, that you wrote narrative fiction stories to accompany and elaborate each track. Where are yeah. those available? Well, I guess cause the album's not out. Duh. Sorry. They'll be coming yeah, out with so the album. Yeah. Hopefully. Yes. It, I'm going to do like a chat book. So like, uh, like a, um, kind of pamphlet. So not like a real, not like a hardcover book because it's like a only 40 pages long, um, short stories. But, um, you know, I wanted to give people something as opposed to like, oh, here's a PDF of the soft stories. Like, this is, this is a, open a PDF. But um, one of the 16, that song, that story was published with the song. Um, and it was just a very short story compared to the other ones, which are a little longer. Um, but they're all still short stories. But yeah, so. I'm excited about that. And you should read the Henry story. I think you'll like it. It okay. kind of follows that path um, as more. Yeah. And it's something you can also sell at shows if you have shows again. Yeah, exactly. If we have shows again. You got, yeah. Are they having shows up there yet? Yes. Outdoor. You know, it's kind of, it hasn't, it's not really back yet anything what about there yeah man i mean this this dude like back in like february or something was like all right we no one needs to wear masks anymore everything's cool like 16 people were vaccinated at that point in all of texas and texas is just weird i mean i'm sure you got that when you were here yeah texas is its own country isn't it it still thinks it is it has a very weird chip on its shoulder like don't mess with us we'll leave (laughs) Yeah, I, I didn't go to the Lyndon Johnson um, live or museum, but I read his, I read those um, Robert Caro, I forget his name, Caro, the biographies um, of him. And so that's an amazing, um, you really get a real look at Texas because he went everywhere, you know, he really campaigned everywhere. And right. It's really cool. Um, really cool to read that. Um, but yeah texas is its own place yeah chicago we have like already we still have like three thousand cases a day i mean i don't oh, really was, yeah it's bad wow i know well I, illinois yeah yeah but still like, we can't get oh, it under control. you guys also you guys have more of a militia vibe going on up here and we're just kind of like our own statewide militia yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, are you vaccinated? Yep, I'm fully vaccinated, and and it I've, I've I've gone to see I went to go see two shows in one day last Wednesday. Oh, uh, I went to a show Saturday. I'm gonna like meet indoor? friends for a drink tomorrow. Uh, no, the thing on Saturday was outside. Okay, it's weird to feel scared to go to a place that used to be so comfortable. You know, like indoor. Like my bands are not. <laughs> yeah. You know, no one's really comfortable going indoor yet. Indoors, yeah. So. I feel like but we'll all be vaccinated. Everyone everyone has had their second vaccine by now. Right. So, yeah. Well, the funny, the funny thing is that there is Texas, but then there's Austin, which is like San Francisco in the middle of like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. it's like the most liberal place. We, we did a good job of keeping it under control here. And even when the, yeah. when the, when the state said we could, no one had to wear masks anymore the the mayor of austin found a way to go through the county emergency system that in a in his law that supersedes the state government to to claim it's a uh uh, uh an emergency a uh, whatever a state of emergency and and everyone has to wear masks so we got around it <clears throat> that's good yeah i yeah. know austin is seems like the um anomaly of the state right anomaly um, yeah that guy rick perry that we used to have as as a yeah 
<laughs> that guy. Yeah. He I, he said it on a. He was on Jimmy Kimmel uh, when they would do it here from South by Southwest, and he said uh, when he came out on stage, everybody booed him, and and Jimmy Kimmel was like, "What's the deal?" And he's like, "Well, we're in Austin, and Austin is the blueberry in the tomato soup of Texas." Uh, so makes sense. Yeah, that's really. Funny. We went to a really good sushi restaurant in Austin. I think it was called. Um, Oh my god! There's probably a million. Yeah. Anyway, good. Well, good. There's like two of them. Yeah, it was cool. I really liked it. And then a lot of we, um, the band. Some of them are vegan, so there's lots of choices. Lots of choices. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it's like San Francisco over here. Yeah. Try and get something vegan in Amarillo, and they'll shoot at you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's the place where you eat the se- if you eat the 72 ounce steak. If you eat the whole thing, you get your picture on the wall. It's one of those places. Wow. Yeah. Um, They're really like America. Yeah. 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 So, Jess, wh- where were you born? You you were born in, in, in Chicago? Yeah. Born and raised here. Um, yep. I haven't really left much. I went to, um, you know, left for school, but not um, anywhere else. I guess, I, you know, um, lived in London for like when I studied abroad for six months, but. That's not, I don't know if that counts as living somewhere else for too long. <laughs> what, uh, how did you, how did, like, was there music in your house? Were your parents, is that why you know the Cocteau Twins? The who? Well, they're in your bio and there's stuff to me that reminds <laughs> me of them. The yeah, Cocteau of Twins. Of course. Yeah. Sorry. Um, uh-huh. Yes. No. It's yeah, one of my favorite love- bands. Oh, yeah. Um, Sorry, I thought you meant like I thought you said something else. I couldn't hear. Um, um, but yes, I love them. And my but my parents raised me on like you know typical like Beatles, um, Paul Simon. Um, you know, he lives out there now. Oh, really? Yeah, he lives out in the hill okay. country. I didn't know that. Yeah, cool. Sorry, go ahead. I love him. Yeah. Um, and then I got into like. The stuff that, you know, like more like Depeche Mode, you know, um, mm-hmm. kind of 90s music, which um, was fun. And that's what I, you know, I'm not like, you know, the synth pop stuff that I'm writing now, like it has like that 90s feel-ish. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I was, I'm trying to think what else they raised me on. Like Santana. Oh, yeah. A lot of the classic rock stuff. A lot of rock. Yeah. Um, so how did you how did you come across the the Depeche Mode and all that stuff? Um, I don't remember exactly how, but I just remember that like someone in college, maybe or I mean, it was like later. Uh, I mean, I don't violator. Like Flesh Bow and that's had been out for a while, but I hadn't heard it. But um, yeah, later on, I just like really liked um, a lot of the new wave stuff. I mean, like, you know, in the 2000s. So after it had been popular, I guess, but it's still popular. Now it's coming back. Um, and yeah, so stuff like that. You like that stuff too? Oh yeah, new like wave. that whole like new wave. Yeah, I'm I'm 52 and I've been playing since I was 14. I had a band, so like it it was uh-huh. there was there was classic rock. There was like the Cheap Trick thing, which yeah. is like my band. You know, the band that okay. I saw that I walked out of the the show going like, "That's it. This is my now. I'm just gonna <laughs> do that." And I never cool. stopped. What was your moment that 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 uh? Um, what was your moment where you were like, that's, I'm going to do that. I'm trying to think if I had like an actual moment besides like my piano teacher yelling at me. Um, I think it was like my college roommate was like, um, cause I didn't play guitar till 19. Um, I played piano and sang, but I didn't start playing guitar until like, at college where this like guy I liked was playing guitar and I was like, Oh, and then my roommate or not my roommate, but a dorm mate, someone in the dorm, she had a guitar. Um, and her dad was like a songwriter and, um, 
she had like all these electric guitars and she was playing like smashing pumpkin songs or like something like that. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I think I was like playing like metal songs, like Alice in Chains. <laughs> so that was the moment. <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, what is, I don't know. Um, and then I got into like the Grateful Dead for a while there. And- <laughs> That's always a detour. I never took that turn. No, no, there's it a wasn't co- like a big turn. It was like a very slight, and then I got back. And they already the weren't. They already weren't touring by the time they were already done. Like Jerry was dead by the time you got okay. into them, right? Oh yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he died when in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Way after that. Um, what about the dead? But- what about the dead? Spoke to you. Because there's nothing the dead about your music at all. <laughs> no. Nothing. <I> know. <laughs> but there is one. There's there's one part in Lights Low, and you probably did not. I'm gonna notice have to go it. back and listen. But go ahead. Notice the last three chords remind me of a death song. <laughs> it's just the outro. Just the outro on Lights Low is reminds me. And that was actually a part my keyboardist wrote. He's like, let's end it on these last three notes. And I was like, this sounds like Althea, which is like, <laughs> yeah, <that>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Um, I don't know. I was kind of into a lot of drugs, unfortunately, back in the day. That's usually the um, gateway to the dead. <laughs> so that was that. And then once I stopped, I didn't really listen to them. Much. <laughs> <laughs> that, that happens too. I did drugs in a very short period of time and then I stopped and I've never done anything since. So it was like, what was your, were out. you doing the acid and stuff? Mushrooms? I never did acid. That was the only drug I never did, but I did everything else. I was actually telling my band the other day that, um, in, I forget, I was, they were passing like a bowl around and it ended up being a crack pipe, but I didn't know that it was crack. And then I fell down 10 flights of stairs. Like I have never in my life and I've done a lot of different kinds of drugs and that was the most, but we didn't know it was crack that they had snuck that in the circle. Anyway, bad news. Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of a violation of your, you know what I mean? That's like asking someone for an orange juice and they dosed it. You know, I know. I I can't be surprised I didn't die. Like, honestly, like, Cause we were smoking, like we were like hoarding it sure. too. Like, like I was like, I want more. <laughs> it was crack the whole time. Oh my God. Yeah. Like how could we not tell it was like crack pipe versus, I don't know that it's not a good situation. But anyway, if anyone who knows me now, like knows that story, I'm like the most, like I don't drink that much. I'm smoke. Like people would be like, what the hell? Um, but yeah. Like I did it and I, I'm down, you know, I did it. And now I can say I did that I'm just in there, but yeah. Not. Well, there's, there's like a whole, like there's a, uh, there are people that, that, that do drugs and, and go through life like regular style people like Sean right. Penn or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or Jack Nicholson or something like they're still getting stuff done. <laughs> oh yeah they just kind of depart I, for a few days and freak out and come back like in their underwear and half shaven or something yeah no totally i have friends who smoke every day and i wouldn't know but like i got paranoid i started to get paranoid um and it just wasn't good i think it might have been like other drugs i was doing that contributed to that you know but uh, I, what a time i like your level of commitment like going into it and like we're doing everything and then, like, yeah. getting out of it and, like, we're doing nothing. Exactly. Give me it all and then not, nothing else. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, that is what I did. I really went full force. Like, you name the drug, I did it. and then But the only drug I didn't do was acid because I was like, I don't want a piece of paper on my tongue and I don't want to know what happens later. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, I didn't trust that. It's weird. I trusted other things, but like, you know, mushrooms felt more natural, you know? Sure, sure. But anyway, but I've been reading, there's some stuff about like microdosing acid that's supposed to be good for like different like mental illness stuff. So, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I've yeah. actually, I, I have a friend that, that doesn't, that does like two weeks on, two weeks off of microdosing. Oh really? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, she microdoses mushrooms, though, not acid. I don't even know what that would look like. She seems normal. She seems she's crazy. So there's like a. She's probably listening to this now. I'm not saying her name. She's probably like, don't say my name. Uh, <laughs> but she's she's kind of crazy anyway, so that you can't really tell. Yeah. Unless she, like, unless she goes yeah. like, oh, my God, that's the most beautiful green I've ever seen, you know, like in a photo or something. Right. So, so you, 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 you got inspired by a dude. Whatever happened to that guy? Did he end up playing or did he end up? Still no, sad. he ended up not doing much, sadly. Well, it got, it was a really sad situation because I really liked him and I think he liked me, but then his best friend was like, told me he was in love with me, like out of nowhere, like his friend. And I was like, what? And then he wouldn't do anything because he was like, my friend likes you. So, you know, one of those. I mean, we were young. That was stupid. Wow. So, yeah. You know... That's always kind of a weird romantic story. I was just watching Casablanca the other day, and that happens in Casablanca. Oh yeah, right. I mean, not that the not that not Humphrey Bogart and the blonde dude are friends, but yeah, Max or whatever his name is. Um, but it's interesting that so many like love stories and super romantic stories are set in that sort of like triangular thing. Yeah. Where someone gets dumped, but it's told from the angle of the person that doesn't get dumped. So I, I think that people should start telling these stories from like, man, it sucked. I had this girlfriend and then this dude swept in and like took her away. I hadn't done anything that bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I feel like in, in my situation, everyone, not everyone lost, but no one ended up with anyone. Right. Because those two stuck together and then I was just alone. One by myself. But now you're out there rocking. Yeah. So I got to tell him. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I don't even, I wouldn't even know if I saw him today. I wouldn't, I don't even think I'd recognize him. It's been a long time. So, (laughs) So, but no, it it was an inspiration for me to start playing. So I thank him for that. Yeah. Which was. Better than a relationship with him would have been, probably. Probably, yeah. My relationship is, yeah. Well, so. You know. <laughs> As life goes on, I've noticed, and, and I've noticed it in creatives a lot. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough to hold on to the person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we have highly romantic uh, expectations of life because of our creative output you know what i mean oh totally and i'm like dating someone who's not a musician now and my bad relationship that i told you about earlier was with a musician but i do feel like i'm like this up and down person but i do think it's because i i don't know i do think there's something with music and having you know just different emotions yeah (laughs) Thing. Well, and kind of so. like being a person that harnesses those emotions and turns them into a, a real thing right. that people can hear and watch you right. do, you know? I mean, it's pretty weird <laughs> yeah. when you really break it down. When you try to explain it to like a banker, it's real weird. Like you seem real weird. No, totally. And that, I do think I seem weird to, yeah, this person, but it's okay. I'm trying to like, you know, be calm and normal (laughs) yeah dude don't 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 feel bad my my i'm currently in a relationship that's fantastic and she's a creative person but not i've never i've never dated a musician in all of my years that's a good idea i i just kind of figured that's too much it is too much i mean it's different i feel like you know like doctors date doctors sometimes because the schedules are similar and it makes sense but like with musicians, too much. No, it's like too. I don't know, too over the top people. You know. Yeah. I mean, not every musician's over the top, but there are moments. You know, there's these like dark places that we go to and bring that person with you. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you having fun yet? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Terrible. So, so when did you start writing songs? Would you? Not until like in like my 20s. I mean, yeah. So like right after I got the guitar, like 19. Um, then I started just like learning my, by myself. I learned covers. Like um, I maybe took like a couple like guitar lessons, but it, de- it never really worked for me because it was like A, 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 E, you know? It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was too regimented and I don't, I couldn't handle that. So um, then I just, yeah, would learn covers. That was really how I like really learned how to play music um, and watching people like on YouTube or whatever. And then, um, and then I just started to write really like weird songs. <laughs> I like, I really think I have found my groove now. Like, you know, it's been like 10 years after 10, 15, 10, 12 years after I originally started writing music that I've, I feel like now I've really found like what I like to do. It took a long time. So sometimes it does. Like, I mean, I started yeah. playing young and I, I started playing covers, but my mom was friends with like real musician people. And so I was like raised around all these musicians and stuff. And I knew people that really wrote songs. And uh, I like I knew when I was like, you know, 14 or 15, you know, people would be like, hey, you got a song? I'm like, I'm, I'm like a kid in high school. Like, <laughs> I don't, let me just sing some songs until I have some some stuff happen. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, and I think it just takes a while. I mean, some people can figure it out right away, but I don't know. I it took me time, and I'm I'm good with that, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. I can't remember who it was. I was listening to. God, I was listening to somebody really great on a podcast. Oh, oh, it was this producer guy, and he was talking to Rick Rubin, and he was saying something about like. He feels like if you play music and you get into the Beatles and you kind of learn a bunch of Beatles songs, yeah. you'll know how to write a song. If you don't come up with good shit, then you just have weird taste. But basically, if you learn a bunch of them, you kind of learn how to write a song. There's bridges, there's choruses, oh, yeah. there's pre-choruses, there's quiet, there's loud, there's lifts, there's tension, there's release, you know? Totally. Yeah, no, to- I 100% agree with that. You know what's- and there's some there there's so much from like something like michelle which is like very intricate oh, yeah. and then like i don't know just a regular old pop song yeah so. yeah that's what i've i've always fascinated with the white album and i don't think it's helped me as an artist that's tried to or that hasn't tried to make focused albums but has been told over and over again that you need to make a more focused album and i'm my my thing is like my favorite album is the white album like that's my favorite yeah. Beatle record. Like that has Rocky oh, Raccoon and Helter Skelter. What's exactly. the problem? You know what I mean? Long, long, long. My favorite song. On that there you record. go. That's a great song. And a, oh, a weird song. Weird. I love that weird George Harrison stuff. Yeah. Is he your favorite Beatle? Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's Paul. I'm one of those guys. <laughs> I do. I just love Paul's voice and I just love, I love, I love them all. I'm a huge Ringo fan. Like, I love Ringo. I just, he's, so, he's, that, that fucking backbeat is got such a swing to it no matter what he's doing that it's just, it's amazing. No, totally. He's the best. And all my drummers at some point have been like, I'm doing a Ringo. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like when I was coming up, like in the 80s and stuff, that was in the time when Ringo, there was an interview John Lennon did in the 70s where they said, uh, some people say Ringo isn't the best drummer in the world. And John Lennon's response was, Ringo isn't even the best drummer in the Beatles. Really? Yeah, and that was like in Rolling Stone. So then... There was this right. myth perpetuated then for decades afterwards that he was horrible. And people would just be like, no, he's horrible. Like, not even. Not even. No. No. Um, so let me ask you this, because we're talking about this composition and stuff. Uh, I read that that song, Give It All Away, which, by the way, is great. And I love the video as well. Oh, cool. Is that you challenged yourself to write a two chord song. Yeah. There's some I'm- weird George Harrison songs. Uh, that are the monotonal one, like uh, 
we were talking. You know, oh no, not that one. The I'll make love to you. You know that song? So, uh, so what was you, why did you want to challenge yourself to try and write a song with two chords? I don't know. I was just like in a mood to not like focus on lyrics and like structure and like have, you know, I was really, um, like intricate just trying to like be, you know, work on specific like cadence and like all this stuff. And I was like, I'm just going to like write a song without worrying about all that. And actually, so the lyrics of that song are the lyrics. Cause when I write music, I, write like chord progression and melody together but the melody and the words i'm singing are like fake words or they're just like blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. so the words for that song are the like fake words and i never changed that's awesome I was like, they, yeah so i was like i didn't want to say that not every song has to have like this deep meaning of like extreme like you know, I don't know. I just, it was, it was about the groove and like the feel. And like, I just wanted a song that was like a jam kind of, you know what I mean? I yeah. mean, we play that in many different ways, like live, it's different than it is on the record. So it can just go with those two chords. You can go in so many different directions. And that's what I loved about it. So, yeah. Do you do a lot of like home recording, like your demos and stuff? Yeah. Tons. Yeah. What do you record on? Like voice memo. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you did like GarageBand or like had a Pro Tools set up or. No, I do have GarageBand. I don't have Pro Tools. I've thought about getting Pro Tools, but I'm like, why? It's just my voice and a guitar. Like, you know what I mean? For the most part, I'm not doing anything else crazy yet. Um, but I do want to get a little drum machine and some other stuff. So I might have to get Pro Tools. Because once the pandemic hit, I was like, I got to do stuff for myself and not, you know what I mean? We're going to the studio so much and stuff. Yeah. We did have to finish one of the songs at home. Like I recorded one of them on GarageBand. On the record, it's recorded on GarageBand. What song is that? Crazy Love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just, yeah. So I mean, Dan mixed and everything on Pro Tools, but my, ver- you know, the vocal and like that part is um, from me at home because we couldn't leave the house for a long time. That's so insane. We, it's so weird yeah. that I'm so out of it that I didn't even realize that you guys were still in a in an intense situation. No, I, it's yeah. I mean, it's it's weird here, but it's like up and down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I know. It's funny, my friend who's in Boston, she's like, restaurants have never closed here. I was like, what? <laughs> okay, I didn't yeah. realize that. Or like not really for, they've been open for a long time now. Like with us, it's, you know, still like capacity at a certain extent. And I think the venues finally open with a certain capacity, but not full. Right. So, and that's, so that's a tough one. I'm doing a, a, a show in June with my own band. And I think it's limited capacity. Yeah. Um, or less limited than it is right now, hopefully. But it will be less than normally is there. And I'm also, I'm in a cover band that we've been able to do some private things. We've done some live streams, but as far as like going out and doing a club or something, it's a big, there's like 10 people. So there has to be a more than a half full room for us to do it. Yeah, they, are they like, like if your band is vaccinated, is there, do they open it up more or is that not even? I don't even know. I heard some venues are going to require like the vaccination card, which is going to be funny because like people are going to lose that. <laughs> I had it. I don't even know what I did with mine. Oh no. You got to find that. Take a picture of it and keep it. Shit, a that's file. a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to do that. I think my girlfriend has them because we got vaccinated I'm- together. Yeah. What did you get? Uh, Pfizer. Me too. I felt bad after the second one. A couple hours after it, I, I slept for 12 hours. Me too. I'd never been more tired in my life that I was going to die. I was so tired. I had never been that tired. That's interesting. It was a weird... Yeah. Can I ask you this other weird question? Did you sure. taste it? No. The metallic taste some people have? There's a weird taste, man. I don't know if it was metallic, but it was weird. I didn't Both have times. That. Yeah. No. But I heard that. 
But I also heard like, you know, there's all these different things people have from the shot. It might be like just unique to people. And did you have COVID? Do you know no. you had it? No, I never had it. No, I've got a, an old girlfriend of mine that I'm very close friends with owns this DNA testing lab. And during the COVID thing, they went into full on COVID testing. So I cool. got tests all the time. Oh, nice. Yeah. All the way up the nose. I didn't like those. Uh, but also you could, she did uh, the, the antibody test too. Yes. I got, I thought I, I know that I was exposed to COVID like for a fact, but I, and I went to get the antibody test months later and I didn't have antibodies. So I don't know what happened. Hmm. And I just didn't get it because 50% of people, if you're exposed like 50% of the time, you won't get it, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. This has been a weird thing, man. <laughs> I actually listened to a podcast called Twiv this week in virology. And it's, um, it, it, there's a guy in Austin too, a virologist. You guys should meet up, hang out. <laughs> Is he vaccinated? Cause I'm looking for people to have drinks with. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to get some virology talk. I actually stopped listening to that podcast because it started to freak me out. But at the beginning I was like really into it. Cause I was like, I want to know everything <laughs> about well, yeah. this. Yeah. Are your kids, your kids are five. How did they take this whole thing? I mean, they don't get it, you know, and they're pretty good. It's like, now they have to wear masks. Like they, if you're a kid, it's like, Oh, that's just like what I have to do. Like me, I'm like, Oh, it's so hard, you know, to have a mask on all, but they don't literally, there's no mention of it. It's just like, you put your pants on, you put your coat on, you put your mask on. It's just like for a kid, it's just like that. Cause they don't, that's just what they think they do now, which is weird to grow up that way. And now thinking, you know, and I do think they're kind of scared. They have to wash their hands all the time. Like all these kids I see you have to like, you know, this is so different than how I grew up and probably you know, how you grew up just in the dirt. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Licking doorknobs, just walking around town. <laughs> right. Which is actually good. You're supposed to lick doorknobs cause it builds your like antibodies that's- for other yeah, when I was a little kid, I lived in Mexico, like in the early 70s for like three or four what? years. Oh. And uh, and I I got sick all the time. And uh, I feel like I, I <laughs> built up some kind of immunity to the world. I'm sure you did. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, I do. I am glad that my kids were like five at least because... They had already had colds. They had had the flu. You know what I mean? They had had things where if it's like, you know, they this year they didn't get exposed to anything. Oh, actually, one of my twins had a cold twice, of course, because he always oh, they get sick a lot. But. Do you do you do another job? Yeah, I do. Um, I do like um, tutoring and um I help kids with learning disabilities, like in college and high school. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, so you, I just like make a schedule, which is nice. And you've been able to keep on doing this because of Zoom and stuff like that. Yeah. It's actually been like crazy because everyone went, everyone panicked. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially with learning issues. Sure, man. Or like health issues. They were like, oh my God, help. They wanted to see me five days a week. I was like, oh my God, people, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> So, but yeah, I felt like, I felt like my business, you know, that part was good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people I know like lost their job, like two people in my band, like it was bad. So yeah. Um, felt grateful that I could do that. Um, but yeah, that's been good. Enjoy it. I've been really lucky throughout this whole thing. I feel like there's been. I do a thing with this. Uh, there's a uh, nonprofit here called the Austin Music Foundation. And we have this cool. thing called the Artist Development Program where we pick a handful of artists and we put them through this stuff for six months and they make a single and, and do all kinds of stuff and, and meet with all kinds of people. This year, obviously, it all changes Zoom. But like, you know, I'm in this cover band, which makes the bulk of my of my living. You know, there's also a thing here I do, a thing there I do, this podcast than things from the podcast, like hosting things and stuff like that. And yeah. luckily every month something would fall together. That was weird, you know, like mm. getting a private party for somebody on zoom, you know, 
That's amazing. Yeah, it's, so, been, um, it's been lucky, but there have been so many people that have been decimated by this completely. No, no for sure. Most people I know. Yeah. It's been horrible. It's been horrible. But that's good that you were able to keep all that going. And, um, you, you know, I think also it's like you, I realized I wasn't spending any money. So I actually was like, you know, like, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. My, <laughs> my belt tightened substantially. <laughs> so I think that really helped, you know, because yeah. it was like, oh, I don't, I, I used to go out to dinner a lot, I realized. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not great. I am ready to like see people again. It's been a long year. It's a good you know? feeling. Yeah. I've hugged a few just, people over the last week and a half. <laughs> yeah, that's what I know because you can go out. It's like warm. The problem here is that it hasn't been right. warm. If you're going outside, you're like shivering with people like, okay, I got to go back in. <laughs> So let me ask you this as we as we start to wrap this up. When a late hour comes out, which it comes out May twenty first, I'll I, there's an intro to this and stuff. So I'll talk about the record and every all of the business stuff before we get into our meandering conversation about children, COVID, and crack. Uh, <laughs> I love that and dream pop. Yeah, uh, a late hour <laughs> drops drops on the twenty first of May. It's a gorgeous yeah. record. Everyone should check it out. You got a bunch of singles out. You got a great video for Give It All Away. Uh, and the video made me happy. Was that Yay. what you guys were trying to do? Yeah. It's we're like, doing another dance one, but it's going to be like 50 people if we can do it outside. Wow. Of course. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Are you guys going to be able to do anything like a live stream or some kind of thing for the release of the album? I don't, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do something. It probably wouldn't be till the summer, like not for the May 21st date, but yeah, we're trying to figure something out. So there's some venues that are doing outdoor um, like events. So that'll be cool to get out there and maybe come to Austin again sometime. Eventually. That'd be great. Yeah. They're, they're saying that South by Southwest so far for next year is on. Yeah. Is on, is to be back on. I think it will. Yeah. Do you? I mean, I think. Do you get, I don't know if Lollapalooza is on here. I don't think it is. They haven't announced it yet, at least. What's the? Oh, that's is summer stages is in Milwaukee, right? Yeah. 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 I have Milwaukee Bonnie, Bros too. You have what? I have Milwaukee Bros. I play with this band. Uh, so I fill in for uh, this guy in the Bodines. You know that band? Oh, cool. yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're from there, but that guy that guy also lives out, out in Dripping Springs. I'm telling you, man, it is like a rock star haven. Dude, Edie Brickell lives out there. Well, she's married to Paul Simon, but like also this Bodine's guy, all kinds of like, that's like if you go to that H-E-B yeah. out there, you're going to run into celebrities, baby. Well, there's a bunch of little breweries. Though. You mean like the little... Um, like oh, yeah. The little... Breweries out the, there, those yeah. Those places have been doing stuff for, like, since the fall, like, you know, oh, cool. outside tables and people playing. Well, hopefully you will get back. And uh, people can find you guys at coursesounds.com. Yeah. Uh, and this guy, Dan Dan Duzinski. Yeah. I know I've heard that name. I've never met him, but I would love to see that studio. I'm going to look him up. Yeah, you should contact him for sure. You're right there. I Go am right it. here, aren't I? You are right. You're right there. You're and in Dripping Springs. <laughs> now I'm ready to just drive. Well, Dripping Springs like 30 minutes away. It's nice. Yeah, it's okay. um, but it feels so rural compared to Austin. That's just funny. It's not that far, but it feels, you know. Yeah. There, yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, I love it out there. Um, Jess, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And I can't it's tell you... So your record is is gorgeous. Um, Thank you. Is there anything you want to say before you go? <laughs> before no, I, I send really you away. <laughs> so more about crack. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, don't do crack. That's what I'm going to say. Um, no, thank you so much for having me. Really, I appreciate yeah. you having me. So, and yeah. Yeah, I've really enjoyed talking to you. I'll let your people know and everything when this goes up and I'll tag you and all this stuff. It'll be a few weeks. Okay, sounds I'm, great. I'm pretty deep in, but uh, but it's been great talking to you, and uh, I hope you have a great day. You too. All right. Bye, Jess. Bye. 
Jess Robbins from the Chicago band Course. Check them out at CourseSounds.com. Their brand new album, A Late Hour, dropped today. So go out there and check it out. Go to CourseSounds.com. I really enjoyed talking to Jess. What a fantastic uh, conversation. What a cool person. And uh, <laughs> what a great record, man. I've been listening to the record for a couple weeks now. So get out there and check it out and enjoy it for yourself. All right, gang? And don't forget when you're out there checking out Course at CourseSounds.com. You can find this podcast wherever it is you stream and download podcasts. New shows every Tuesday, every Friday. Got uh, You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Overcast, Stitcher. Anywhere you get podcasts, new shows every Tuesday and every Friday. All right, let's hear the rest of this song, Give It All Away, from the Chicago-based synth-pop band, Course. All right, everyone have a great weekend. I'll be in a teepee in Marfa. Let's get down. Get down, get down.